Hi everyone, it's Heather Darnall. Welcome back to my art channel. Thank you for joining me for another video. So today's project, I'm going to do something for my older brother. I've painted a lot of things for him before, but I've never done something in a paint pouring style. So hopefully he likes it. And it's nice to shake things up from time to time anyways. But um, so for this piece, I'm going to do a split base diptych Dutch pour. And I'm going to use the colors of the California state flag. And I'm doing that because when he opened his business or started his business, I think five or six years ago now or something, he made his business card colors also centered around the colors of the California state flag, which you can see has a white background and then there's this real simple red, brown, and green, and that is really it. So I'm gonna include the background to obviously be white, but I thought the opposing color, I would have black because I thought it's a nice contrast color and if there really is any kind of detail in there as far as like outlining, then it would be fitting and matching as well. So, but there is one concern that I have in this project, will be interesting to see how it turns out, is the fact that when you mix red and green, they make brown and there's already brown in, in the picture. So I don't want an overload of brown, so I think I'm gonna ease off on the brown and hope that the red and green will do the job for me. And I am gonna add some gold. I think that would just, I mean, who doesn't like extra detail and shimmer? You know, kind of goes without saying, at least I do. But anyways, I'm hoping that the gold will enhance the brown. And of course, like I said, just add to the detail of the overall composition. So let's see how that goes. But before we get started, today's ministry snack comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. And it reads, On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten leopards who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? No one was found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Okay, at this point, Jesus' ministry is super popular, and if you haven't already laid eyes on him, it is very, very likely that you have at least heard of him. But more than that, you've heard of his miracles and what he's capable of doing. And so in the, this case, these 10 leprous guys, they've heard of him, definitely, and I'm pretty sure they knew of him enough to recognize him. If they haven't already seen him, they knew that, that this must be the guy because you know, Jesus was known for walking around with a small pack of disciples. And if you kind of see that, oh, that must be the one. That's what these guys had in their mind. And it was so confident to know that he was the one to shout his name from a distance. Lord Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Cleanse us and heal us. And Jesus saw that they were in dire need and took pity on them. He knew they needed to be cleansed. And he also knew that this was another miracle he needed to perform to have yet more people believe, if not the ones that already believed to have even more belief in him, like to lock and secure that belief that they need to have in him. Because that, like I said, I've said this before, to, to believe that this man, Jesus, coming from heaven and claiming to be the Messiah, there's a lot of things in there that need to be done um, that need to really solidify his title and who he is. And for a lot of people, and I imagine myself too, it would probably just, it, I would probably need to see more than one because, you know, you see one thing, you're like, you know, was that, did I really, really see that? But, you know, two, three, four, five, ten times, you're like, oh my gosh, that's the guy. And so anyways, he took pity on them and he cleansed them from a distance. He wasn't, he didn't cleanse them the way that we are used to seeing or imagine him cleansing somebody, you know, with images that we've seen like paintings or that, you know, when he has his hand on someone's head and he's giving a blessing and it's very heartwarming. The whole moment is special. No, there wasn't any of that. He didn't spend any kind of time with them. He just shouted back from a distance, go show yourself to the priest. And he went on his merry way back into Jerusalem. I mean, he was on his mission. He needed to get back to Jerusalem. And so as these guys were walking back, cool, oh my gosh, it's actually happening. Look, we're all, we're being healed. Um, they went to go show themselves to the priests and um, which was very important still. Jesus didn't just say, you're good. You don't have to do anything else. 
he still told them that they had to go show themselves to the priests in order to be verified that they were indeed cleansed. Now, Jesus followed the law when he was on earth, and he expects everybody else to follow the law, which is why he told those other, uh, why he told the men to go do so. Now, if you are a Bible nerd and you just really want to know those facts, you will definitely find them in the Old Testament, the book, the book of Leviticus, which is like the third time I've noted that book. But anyways, it's full, it's filled with all of those laws. And those laws are as dry and boring as they are, they really, really, really help you understand not just the situation, but so that the rest of the Bible makes sense um, where, when it comes to little details like that. So, and I love that about God's word. He doesn't leave any gray areas. He doesn't leave any holes. You, he gives you everything that you need to know. And so, again, if you want to go back to the book of Leviticus, you'll find out what these laws were and the process to do that. It's actually just really weird if you, it's, it's, it's really weird, very odd. I don't know why they, they would do things like that, but that was the law. And I believe it's chapter 13 that you'll have to reference. But anyway, so Jesus um, also did something that I thought would be interesting to put to the table, bring to the table is that when he healed these guys, like I said, he wasn't from close distance or spend any kind of time. The fact that his word was enough and it was that fast. It wasn't like, okay, wait two days and take this and do that. No, it's also showing us that he works in different ways, not just one way, like I said, that when, when we're used to seeing him heal with hands on heads and all that kind of stuff, that's a one-way street that we're, we're used to imagining him doing his work. So he wanted to shake that up and demonstrate it in this situation that, hey, I, I work different. And that's a wonderful thing because he wants us to get used to doing work differently too. When we work in someone else's lives, we need to be, when we're a blessing in someone else or, or with or for someone else, he also wants us to get used to the fact that not every time is going to be the same way. And that's how he works in our lives and he expects for us to work in other people's lives. So just have an open heart for those things because once you start getting comfortable only doing one, you know, one way, you know, you're really not, and then you're going to wonder why things are failing. Just think about what your pattern is. Are you still doing the same thing or are you shaking things up like Jesus is telling you and demonstrating? So always seek the Holy Spirit. He will definitely lead God and direct you in that area. But it was just something to bring to the table. How I thought it was really interesting to see how Jesus works in our lives. Um, now, in this case here, if you had leprosy, this was a horrible skin disease. You just wanted, you did not want anything to, oh my gosh. If you thought you, I mean, COVID was bad. The pandemic is bad. But we at least have, you know, friends, neighbors, family to rely on, bringing us food, making sure we're okay. Uh, but with leprosy, pff, you were outcasted from your community, period. I mean, and if you even came in, you had to like, shout on clean you had to carry this little bell around you you know no one wanted anything to do with you and that is super sad you got you guys because family and friendship and fellowship and all this stuff is essential in life those are the blessings that's how we live we we live through being a blessing to each other family or friends and when we're Without that, we feel empty. And these 10 guys literally were not only probably starving, physically uncomfortable, but they are definitely lacking people around them and having blessings of what God does um, in their lives with people. And which is why Jesus knew that and took the immediate pity that he did on these 10 guys. But the problem was only one came back, just one. One came back and fell at his feet and was super grateful and really just loved the fact that Jesus would do something for a man that was so unclean. But Jesus didn't be like, oh, well, that's not my problem. He loves all of us too much to just be like, eh, it's not my deal. You need to take care of it yourself. He's going to answer our prayers. Some quick, some it's going to take a long time. But again, just really think about the way Jesus is working in your life and longer prayers that take to be answered are usually for a reason for growth. But in this case, these men came to Jesus in faith and he knew he needed to perform a miracle for his disciples and other viewers to make sure that they knew that Jesus was legit. Um, so now just think that in your life, have you thanked God enough? Probably not. I know I haven't. I know what I 
do as I wake up and I check my phone, I start my day and do all these kind of things. And I, I don't even remember to thank God for the new day. I don't even remember to thank God for the things that are going right in my day or in my life. And I need to be more mindful um, to have the gratitude of this, the same gratitude that this man had. He had so much gratitude that Jesus didn't eat, didn't just cleanse him of his disease. He cleansed him of his sin too, because the other nine that didn't come back were just like, oh, cool, you know, we get to go on our merry way and just kind of do everything like, just like I do. You know, I just I get what I want. You know, pray for something. I'm like, oh, cool, you know, and I go do my thing. But I don't sit and take the time to tell Jesus, thank you, thank you for doing that. It wasn't just luck. Jesus was there orchestrating things for me to allow me to have the things or the situations work out to how I wanted. And when they don't, that's okay. Because either it's not time for that situation or it's just not what he thinks is best for me. And we really need to be more mindful of that as well. So take this message of gratitude, measure out your gratitude. Cause if you're like me, it's probably this much, definitely not enough. I would need at least a full day minimal to without breaks to even begin thanking Jesus for all he has done. That's embarrassing. And in this situation, Jesus is looking for thanks and he only got it from one guy. So how thankful are we? How much time do we spend with the Lord thanking him for all the things that he's done for us? It's probably quite embarrassing on how bad we lack on that. Like I said, I know how much I lack on that and there's no excuse. So for the blessings that we get to do, painting together and fellowshipping with our friends and everything else, that's always from him. Glorify him with his blessings. Let everybody know how good he's been to you. Because if you don't, you bottle up and you just ignore it. No one else is going to know how wonderful he is to have the same kind of faith and blessings as you. So share the word. It's good stuff. All right, guys, let's get started.
and the sky is gray. I went for a walk on a winter's day. If I didn't tell her, I could leave today. California dreaming, such a winter's day. Such a way.